Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I, I think I have a pretty exciting video. It's something I've been looking forward to and I've kind of been working up towards. Today, what I want to do is see what a switching power supply does to audio, to the output signal of the audio amplifier. Okay? If we use a switching power supply, they're actually less money and they're lighter weight and they a lot more efficient so you know so there's a lot of pluses using a switching power supply so I, I have about a, this is about a 600 watt power supply we're gonna look at that power supply and see how much noise from that power supply gets to our output signal okay and what we'll do is we'll compare it to a linear amplifier instead of me building a you know Troy transformer followed by a bridge rectifier followed by some big old bulk capacitors. Instead of me doing something like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of my big old HP power supplies back here. I mean, they're behemoths, but they're super clean outputs. So that'll give us kind of a best case scenario. Then we don't have to worry about, you know, after my uh, bulk capacitors that I do, a, you know, some kind of filter like a LC filter or even an RC filter or something like that. Uh, you know, real clean output, right? Okay, so, We'll, we'll take a look at those two things. Now, the one thing about power amplifiers is they do have a spec. It's a power supply rejection ratio. So that means that when you put a power supply in your amplifier, those voltage rails, they're going to have some ripple on them. But the amplifier is designed so that that ripple doesn't affect, um, or at least to a minor degree, what the output looks like. Okay? And what we want to do in this case is look to see you know basically compare these two power supplies to each other so that's what we're going to do so let's say an amplifier has only 40 db of power supply rejection ratio well every 20 db is 10x so that's 220 so that's 100 right 100x so let's just say you had i don't know 10 volts which is ridiculous but just say you had 10 volts ripple uh 100 times would be, what is that? that? That would be only 100 millivolts of ripple on the output that might get through the audio. So, you know, if you had some ridiculous amount of that and you only had 40 dB, you'd have that much ripple. But if you had 60, you'd get another 10 times. So now it's 1,000. So now instead of 100, it'd be 10 millivolts. So if you had that kind of ripple, you'd either have a terrible power supply or you'd be... And or you'd be playing some music really loud, pulling a big load and, and, and causing a rip on those capacitors, which still, you shouldn't have 10 volts. <laughs> but just for an example, okay? So amplifiers do have a rejection of the power rails to it, you know? They're, they're designed to look at the input signal and amplify it and put the same signal out amplified, right? And if the voltage rows are moving around a little bit you know they're supposed to ignore that and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to see how well they do that okay we're going to use the switching power supply first and I think we're going to go out to one megahertz and the reason why um, one megahertz is we're using a class D amplifier for this test this class D amplifier is essentially a switching power supply with the reference as the input voltage so is the imp, you know normally in a switching power supply you have a solid reference voltage that helps you keep a solid DC output right in this case we have an audio signal and so the output's trying to track that with some amplification so that's why I say it's essentially a switching power supply so it is switching switching 450 kilohertz and we know that when we look at the output of a class D we can see that switching frequency on the output signal but it's way past our hearing, and it's a small ripple compared to this to the actual signal. So we can't hear it for for one thing. It's beyond our frequency range, and you know hopefully it's small enough that it's not affecting anything. But the point is in this video is we want to use this guy, and what we'll do is we'll look at with no signal going out just to see if it's a flat line, and then we'll look at uh, the switching now 
even though there's no signal, it's still switching at 450 kilohertz. So we're going to see some noise out of 450 kilohertz we expect to see. So we should see that. And with the switching, how much more does that add to, to the noise that this might create outside of our audio band or even inside our audio band? And we'll compare that to the linear and I'll save one of the waveforms. Then when we use the linear, we'll look at that waveform right on top of it so we can see, you know, on top of each other, side by side, essentially, you know, even closer than that, right? On top of each other, we'll be able to see if we got a lot cleaner signal using the linear. Okay, so that's the deal. And let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, by the way, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Pico scope. This is a 5444 awesome scope. And it has a really clean output, so I'll show you how clean the output signal is. We'll look at the spectrum of that, and then we'll uh, do this test, all right? So, uh, yeah, it should be interesting. So let's jump over here to bench and do it. Now, like I say, first I'm going to start off the switcher so we can see the worst case. And you might be like, ah, oh, that's terrible. I don't know, maybe it won't look too bad. And then we'll look at the linear. And we might go, ah, that looks way better. Or maybe not. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> All right, let's do it. What I'm going to do is bring the... Oh, that's the linear. We're going to start the switcher first. I think I just have to reach over and hit the switch. And then we're going to look at the Pico. Okay, so uh, put on my glasses. Had these glasses in my toolbox for many years. You might be able to tell. They're pretty old-fashioned. But the... They work great. I like the protection. All right, so here we go. I'm going to bring it over to the screen. And what you see now is I've got the generator turned up to, uh, I, I think this is high as amplitude will put out, 2 volts. And down here you see the measurement, 1.4 volts RMS. Okay? And up here, so the, the graph up here is the spectrum. And this is the what you normally are used to seeing time based on the oscilloscope okay so up here is frequency based uh and it's a spectrum so frequency we see 0k all the way out here to 20k across the bottom and if we look down here at this other window you see 100 150 milliseconds you see milliseconds right there's zero seconds 50 milliseconds so it's kind of showing plus minus whatever but uh as if time is negative right <laughs> i guess it is right this is before it triggers and this is after it triggers so yeah in that case it's uh going back in time anyway uh so this is a pico scope uh, i'm using the seven software um and this is the early access this is you know kind of a beta version that's been out for a while and it's got gets updates continuously and over here on the left you'll see it's running first of all then underneath that channel a is on and right now it's four volts uh from top to bottom so four volts here minus four volts down here okay and then the other channels are off the digital channels are all off the generator is on one kilohertz two volts so that's what you're seeing there okay all right and the other thing i want to point out is i do have the 12 bits uh, selected just to get a little bit better vertical resolution and I can increase these window sizes you know for instance I go to this plus and I can do it this way if I want I can also grab that window I, there's different ways to do the same thing but right here you can see 2.4 volts if you do the, uh, divide that by 20 and take the anti-log of that you'll get about 1.4 volts so it's you know it's that's what that's how it translates okay now the other thing what we want to do is here let me just, well here I'll just take this little window pull it down here and you see these other little spikes over here let me move this guy let me move this guy over this way in front of the one kilohertz signal that we're injecting and then you see the these other spikes over here right and when you look to the left here the the grid see here's this spike right here this is the tallest one right above the window here we come over here it's about 59 
uh, minus 59 dBs. And then these other guys are even lower. So let's say 60 dBs is like one millivolt. So we're putting in a 1.4 volt RMS signal and you know the second or the third harmonic is I'd say the third harmonic is the highest one right and it's about one millivolt so you know it's like a thousand times uh, attenuated so I, I think that's safe to say it's pretty clean generator and you can see how flat it is there's no high frequency noise or anything like that now what I'm going to do is the way this window works where I am right now is if I click on plus minus up here it's frequency but if I do the one down here it is voltage so I'm going to click it once and it goes to one volt that's closer to uh, the max I need I need about 800 millivolts about 840 millivolts to get full power that I'm going to uh, inject but I just wanted to kind of show you at this level and you can see what happened to these other spikes they kind of disappeared the second harmonic still kind of bounced around but it's down here at minus 66 db so point is is this is really clean right okay so now let's go ahead all right guys i'm going to bring up the 48 volts right now you'll see it happen but the amplifier is turning on right now right just below 20 volts Okay, I'm getting a little hum from the power supply. It's putting out some power. It's because I got a pretty good signal coming out. All right, there we go. Now, that is the input. We're still looking at the input signal. And we didn't, you didn't really see anything get added, right? Okay, I'm going to drop that down and move it to the output. All right, so this is our, uh, we, we don't have anything happening right now. We're just looking at the output and over here we have minus 75 dBs and right here's 80, 85. So we're below minus 75 dB for the most part and we're looking at 20 kilohertz. So you know what, let's go out a little bit farther. Okay, that's almost one meg, all right? So we should see 450 kilohertz when we start switching. And we'll see the next harmonic over here. It's going to be 900. So it's going to be right about here. So we should see some noise here and some noise over here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first turn off the generator. So generator is not even doing anything. All right. So I'll turn on the power supply and let's just see how much noise we get out okay i just want to make sure i got everything hooked up right okay looks good all right there we go there's our switching power supply there's our 450 kilohertz it might look really trashy but this is auto scaling so the minus 42 db is right here now this guy is up here uh you know it's pretty high so 450 kilohertz we have a narrow spike it goes pretty high but again we can't hear that and then you know um, on either side of this there's little lobes so those are like little sidebands so there's something that's kind of modulating between these two things and you know what let me just see if I can see what uh, the frequency difference is between these things because we might see, what I would guess is we'll see that frequency somewhere too. All right, so the difference is 23 kilohertz, so it's just above the audio range. So we might see a spike at 23 kilohertz, and it's a plus minus 23. Okay, we'll, we'll just keep an eye out for that. But yeah, so we're seeing these spikes. Then over here at 900, we're seeing, um, we're seeing that. And I don't know, there's something right here. But yeah, we're seeing spikes kind of everywhere, right? So what's the difference between that spike and this one? Okay, the difference is 153 kilohertz. But I'm wondering if every 153 kilohertz we're going to see something. Yeah, look at that. There's, so there's something in there 
at 153 kilohertz. So if I go, see, 153 kilohertz from that cursor to the next one. Yep, there we go. So, yeah, we're seeing something about every 153 kilohertz. So let's go over here to the lower side, this essentially subharmonics. And yeah, 156. I'm not getting these scenes exactly on the spikes, but yeah, it looks like we have something going on. So here, let me move this guy over to the spike over here. That spike right there. There it is again, 153K. And then there's little stuff in between. So we've got different frequencies causing noise, but most of these guys are really low. It's just kind of interesting to take a look to see what's happening there, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this. I'm going to turn off the power supply. Probably should turn off the power supply so you didn't have to listen to that. Uh, not sure how loud that came through yet. I'll find out when I edit this video. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do is I want to come down here to the reference. And we're going to add this reference. And I'm going to make that red. Yeah, I'll just choose red. Okay. So now I have a red reference. See this guy over here? So if I grab this thing, well, all I have to do is click on it. You can kind of see. So if I go back and forth, there's a the blue. Now I did move it a little bit, didn't I? So uh, let me see if I can get it back to being on top of each other. Okay, so now they're right on top. Okay, maybe this is a good way where I can go back and forth. So you can, I'll do it a couple times so you can kind of look at different points. You know what? I'll also maybe get rid of these cursors for now. Get them out of the way. Because they look like, yeah, so that way it's, you can see everything. Okay, so there we go. There's our reference. Okay, we're going to uh, take the power supply over to the linear. All right, guys, I'm going to start it again. And the blue one, you're going to see go flat. So if I come over here and click on the blue, well, it only have to. It auto-adjusted, so right away, we're back to where we were about. The noise floor is down around 85 dB. This is 85 right here. Okay, so, um, yeah. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up the linear. This happens to be a 6274B. HP power supply is capable of 60 volts and 15 amps. So it can definitely do what we need to do on this test. Especially since I'm not putting out any signal right now. Oh, okay. Now here's an interesting thing. See if I, as I bring up the voltage, these waveforms kind of move around a little bit. All right. Uh, yeah, that's lining up pretty good. It's about the same voltage. So, uh, let me freeze that. And then I'll drop it down. Looks very similar, but also there is slight differences. Uh, but yeah, I tried to line these up. See this spike right here and this spike. So I was looking at some of these spikes. The amplitude between the two. Let me go to the red one. Okay, there's red. Some of them aren't lined up exactly. But you can see these red spikes here. And then when I go to blue, and also like this main one, you'll, let's see what happens when I go back to blue. Yeah, the red might be slightly taller. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like this, there's a spike here, there's a spike here. So that could be the switching powers by that 153 I don't know, because there's a spike here too, so it's kind of hard for me to tell right now. Because in the blue one, I don't see some of these frequencies. So here, let me bring this cursor out over here. And I was looking for the highest red one. 130K, that could be it. There's 157, and there's no blue one, so... 
possibly that's a switcher right there and that could be a subharmonic here to me see there's about 79 kilohertz between these guys so I wonder if it's 79k now there's no load so yeah you know what maybe the switchers adding these 79 kilohertz spikes across here but one thing is you can see they're fairly low they're down in basically the weeds down with the uh, class D switching so even though they're new spikes I don't know if uh, they've made anything visually that much worse right or for that matter sonically okay so uh you know what let's go to 20 kilohertz let's drop it down okay so now we're down to 20 kilohertz let's go ahead and run that and All right, so what we're gonna do is we got 20 kilohertz band here. Uh, we will go to the views, just remove that guy, and we're gonna start over. This time we're gonna start with the linear and see what the linear looks like at 20 kilohertz. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now that's interesting. Okay, I stopped it. I'm gonna drop it. Now this is a linear power supply. So this guy has to be uh, an artifact of the 450 kilohertz or, or some other frequency coming from the class D. And this is right around, let's see what frequency this is. Okay, that's uh, uh, 9.7 kilohertz. So roughly 10 kilohertz. Here, I'll get rid of this cursor, get it out of our way. If I can, okay. Uh, and then you know what? Or this is a harmonic from this, it looks like, right? So this is nine, this is about, um, well, it's, you know, it's almost 10 kilohertz. This is almost 20 kilohertz out here. So yeah, that could be coming from that. Now, um, this is going up to, about minus that right there is minus 14.7 db so it's fairly small so that could be some ripple on the power supply uh, maybe those bulk capacitors maybe if i put some filtering on those maybe i could clean this up now let's it's going to be interesting to see if that increases when we uh, inject our signal right wow okay Let's move the power over to the switching power supply and see. Well, here, first of all, let's, before we lose this, let's go to reference and let's make this a reference and we'll make it uh, red again. Well, maybe I'll make this in green just so we remember that it's different than the other one we saw. So. So the linear power supply will use green maybe and red for the switcher. Um, so here we are. There's the reference. See, now when I start running this again, it auto adjusts. And so there's a blue one back. So, okay, here we go. And I'm going to turn on the switcher. Here we go. Okay. You know what? I think the reason the frequency is a little bit different. Well, it's kind of coming in. You have to wait a minute for it to take enough samples. So, yeah, it's getting real close. So, uh, I've got a lot of samples taking coming in. And so the math just has to average all this stuff out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and freeze that and turn off the fan. Turn off the power supply. So, that's one thing we get is a little fan noise. Now, look. Here we, we did see some of these guys. So we do see a little bit more noise with this uh, switcher. Let's bring the thing over. And I'm kind of surprised they're really low frequencies too. Like, wow. 1.7 kilohertz. 
that's probably gonna be around three kilohertz so wow this is kind of interesting because these are low frequency one thing to note is the highest peak here is still minus 50 db so that's really low if 0 db is 1 volt 20 db is 100 millivolt 40 is 10 millivolt 60 is 1 millivolt so it's it's you know only a few millivolts so it's very low but it is interesting now see this green one in the blue that's some kind of I, I don't think I had these things lined up perfectly uh, so the mold you know when you multiply it by two it separates them a little bit more so these are just coming from this guy and it's interesting there's two right there too so huh that it's kind of an interesting thing all right so from the switcher we do get these extra little spikes right here at low frequency again very low and they go out to about uh, five kilohertz and then they seem to kind of go away so that seems to me like that's got to be coming from the power supply we probably clean that up with some capacitors around the big bulk capacitors so okay that's and plus it's probably you, I doubt you could ever hear that it's very narrow bands see how narrow they are well there is something else there though we we kind of see that now you see the green one how it kind of has this kind of low frequency ripple right here and the blue one looks like it kind of follows it that's all from the class D okay so it'd be nice to be able to clean this guy up right cleaning this up would make these two low guys drop too but again these guys are really low uh, but this switcher does look like it's putting out these little guys, which I don't think is any big deal. They're pretty low. And so, but it's something we could think about, right? Okay, let's go ahead and add a signal now, and we'll go backwards. Let's get rid of the green one, okay? Uh, let's remove that. And then we'll add this one as our reference right now and again we're going to make the class uh we're going to make the switcher red okay so it's over here click in here click up here and we should see the blue come back and there's the red now what i want to do is put a signal on one thing i'm going to be interested in if these get amplified hopefully they don't but uh yeah let's find out so we're, what we're going to do is come over here our generator and turn it on. Okay. Now our generator is uh, 1 kilohertz. So it's right where I'm putting this marker. We're looking at the output. So you can see that the input 1K does not go to the output with the power off. So we're going to see it jump up right there. I'm going to just move this out of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the power. All right, there we go. Now let's wait a minute for us to sample and average and all that kind of stuff. And wow, that's interesting. Now it auto adjusts, so we're gonna have to. Uh, and I think the reason why is it's trying to keep this peak inside, so it pushed everything down. Now you know what the class D, it kind of it kind of changed it a little bit in frequency. It dropped in frequency a little bit to. Uh, because of the power running through it so let's go ahead and freeze that turn off the fan all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to th this is our signal that we put in right and right there so we got 20 dbs a pretty close to 20 db signal okay so just remember that our signal is one kilohertz 20 db Let's go ahead and drag this guy up. Uh, we have minus 21 right here. So I'm gonna try to get 21 up there. 14, 15, 16. Okay, I got 20. Let me see if I can pull this down and get 20 here. Ooh, 
It's right in between. I'm just going to have to leave it there. 19.95. It's pretty darn close. So we got 50 here and 51 over here. They're, they're pretty darn close. They're just slightly set up different. But this is interesting because look at that. This signal actually dropped with, with, with power running. The load actually caused this guy to drop down. So that's good. Now, right now, it's about minus 17.6, and our signal's at 20, so we really have about 37, almost 38, um, you know, dBs of signal and noise from our input signal to this one. And then these, all the rest of them are down here at 40, so there's like 60 dB. So that's quite a bit. That's pretty good. But yeah, this one's about 40 from our input down so it'd be nice if we could figure out where this guy comes from and drop it down a little bit all right guys so then we come over here and we look at these red things that we had before and i see one right here uh a blue one see if i click on the blue i think i see a little blue in here a little blue in there so it looks like well the blue one is actually taller than this red one here right no Okay, the red's right there, the blue's taller. So, yeah, so the blue did increase with our signal for this particular frequency. It's just below one kilohertz, but it's down here at minus 50, so it's still pretty darn low when we, it, you know, have 20 dB up there, so 70 dB. Uh, but this red one that we had before, the blue one's down here, so it did drop there, but it created a new one. Oh, you know what? This is a harmonic though. That's uh, two kilohertz. So that's harmonic from the one K. So we got two K, three K. So this guy here is our harmonics from our, uh, you know, the harmonics you normally get. Uh, we just, you know, the whole interest is keeping our harmonics low too. So we have good harmonic distortion numbers. Now this is minus 40, this peak here, which is, the highest harmonic, the third harmonic, which is kind of a typical one to be high. And it's about 60 dB signal and noise from the primary, the fundamental to this third harmonic, right? So that's about almost 60 dB, it looks like. And then these drop another 10 dB. Then this one is getting actually kind of close as a fifth. And then the sixth is down, seventh. It typically falls that way. The odd harmonics are a little taller, but they're all below 40, and we have 20 dB signals, so they're all below, you know, more than 60 dB uh, difference from the input. Now, this blue one, we have these things over here, so now we've created these guys. Let's go back to red. And the red, we didn't see that. So these guys uh, kind of popped up once we got the signal. And see this guy here? And then we have this one and this one right here. Those are like, look like sidebands, like lobes to this guy, right? So let's just bring our cursors over here again. Okay, that's 6.7 kilohertz. And that is uh, 8.7. So it's about two kilohertz between them. If I grab this one and go two kilohertz over, it's probably gonna land on this guy. So you see what I mean? There's like a two kilohertz modulation that this thing's riding on top of. So we get these little side lobes. And I'm guessing these guys are two kilohertz away from each other. Let's take a look. Yeah. I mean, there's several little spikes in there, but yeah, it's about two kilohertz between that. So something's going on with the two kilohertz oscillation. And that's probably this ripple right here. You see that? That looks like it's pretty close to the same thing. I th no, this is actually a little higher frequency, it looks like. It's kind of a low frequency ripple that's going on it's about 1.4k we got it here on this side too on the red one so it was about 1.4 it it uh 
And if we look here, this red guy, going back to the red one again, and we go between that and this first lump, it's about 1.3K. So this red spike moved, it changed in frequency this much, and its little side lobes uh, increased in frequency from 1.3 to 2K. Over here, this would be 1.3. Yep, see, 1.3. So those side lobes spread out a little bit. And this guy changed in frequency. Let's see. It went from where it used to be about 9.7K to 8.7K. So it changed about 1 kilohertz. Huh. That's interesting. It changed about the same as the signal we're putting in. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. I wasn't going to do this, but uh, I can't help but investigate this a little bit. Let's move these guys out of the way. I'm really curious if I increase this frequency here, if these little side lobes change or if this drifts so let's go ahead and just power it up and let's do a little experimentation here kind of getting off the the train of what i was going to do but let's just do it we gotta wait like say do all the math it's you know thinking about this stuff okay there we go we're seeing this stuff happen okay now what i'm gonna do is come over here and and see one kilohertz I'm gonna to go to 2k and you have to uh, it actually does affect it yeah so the so that is so this 400 this uh, frequency has been modulated by our input signal see when I went higher these two lobes went wider apart so yeah this is being modulated by our our uh, signal okay so if I go to 3k four I can start hearing it you probably hear it singing now 6k let's go to 10k you know I mean they are really low down here in the noise floor so whether you can hear these side lobes or any of this noise, it's just kind of interesting and it kind of helps us find if we understand what's happening, we can, we can help filter that out. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point, now that we have our signal, we're going to go back to the one meg thing. And our reference is getting squished into oblivion. That's two meg. Let's go one meg and let's get rid of our reference okay and then we'll add this as our reference and this is our switcher so we'll make it red again all right so there we go i'm going to we got the 1k thing okay let's go ahead and freeze this Turn off the power, save ourselves a little bit. Okay, so I got the red thing saved, right? So I can start this and the blue's gonna readjust. But yeah, there's a red. So over here, uh, 450 kilohertz. You know what, let me just turn off the channel for a second. Okay, there we go. So this is what we saved. It's switching at, uh, I keep on saying 450, but let's see what it actually is. Okay, about 448. So that's our switching. And then see how we, this kind of, the noise on either side is kind of mirrored. So we have harmonics and subharmonics probably. Uh, Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's modulation or subharm or harmonics, but uh, especially when I see two guys like this close together. This guy's 323. This one's roughly 
287. It's about 50 kilohertz between them, which, which when we come over here, we're going to see the same thing. I'll just do it this way so you can see for yourself. Okay, about 37 kilohertz. If I bring these over here. Now this is way out here, 200, you know. I mean, we're way out, way, way beyond our hearing. And also, this is minus 50 dB, so it's way down here. So, you know, it's not like I'm trying to make a big deal about this because it isn't, it's, it's not a big deal. You can't hear this stuff. Uh, but it's just curious. Like I say, if you kind of understand what's happening, you can, you know, maybe have a way to, something to look for. 35 kilohertz. And over here, this guy way over here is the first harmonic from this fundamental switching frequency right here, this 450. So this is close to, close to 900 because it's just a little bit less than 450. So that's what that is. There we go. Okay, now let's go look at the HP. Look at the same thing, okay? Let's turn this back on. Put it back to auto does a really nice job in auto mode so let's go ahead and switch over the power and take a look again this is our HP our linear power supply again okay it's turning on let me let me get the voltage up there okay I think that's same voltage okay we'll freeze that and turn it off so we let the power supply cool down and you kind of hear the HP power supply hum a little bit too, maybe. I'm not sure if it comes through in the mic, but... Okay, so that's the new signal, the blue one we just captured. And if I look how the blue's painted on the red, it doesn't look quite as high here. It looks a little bit different. Uh, not quite as high on these things, but it still kind of shows up some noise in the same spots. Again, um... Minus 50 dB is this line right here. So most of it's underneath that. This guy that's way out here, the harmonic from the switching one is, you know, about minus 35 below that. And the switching one's um, right there, minus 8. So remember, our signal's at 20, so it's still 30 dBs below. Again, way below what you can hear. It's just curious to see what kind of noise shows up from the switching power supplies but you see the blue painted on these red it looks like they're a little bit lower in clusters this one right here the blue and red on the main class d looks about the same now the stuff all squished over here this is the audio stuff and minus 40 is right there so that's what we were looking at before those little things there and like I say that's all a minus 40 and below so now I'm gonna click on the red power row here so we can see the red and we see a little blue stuff here you know the the grass the weeds whatever you want to call it uh, the red looks a little bit taller than the blue but not not grossly though right I mean it's 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 like really uh, I mean, I'm wondering if I ran it and stopped it a couple times, if if it's just where I stopped it, just by happenstance, I got a slightly different signal. Now, I'll go back to blue. Right here, this cluster here looks more red. Maybe right here and right here. But, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering. I kind of feel like if I stopped it, froze it, two or three different times here let's just do it for fun now it could be that when I stopped the switcher I just happened to catch a, a more worst case scenario but who knows okay let's bring up the power okay and yeah you you know what I'm saying you can see it kind of jumping around changing like right here right here so if I freeze it at the right time, it looks like some of these are jumping up the same. And so I could have just happened to catch a red one at the worst time, but 
Yeah, anyway, it's pretty darn close, right? So I just turn off the HP and I think you kind of get a good idea just look at these two things go back and forth a couple of times. They're pretty darn close. Uh, down in here is where we're looking. So you know what? It's kind of surprising, right? Here, let's see if we can go back to 20 kilohertz. I'm going to go ahead and start this. And... Oh, you know what? Uh, now, the red reference, you can see it saved it. But see, it's kind of coarser. It's not a narrow spike. Because it didn't get as many samples when it's looking at 1 megahertz. That's why... It, it's kind of spread out more like this, but yeah, it's still there. So let's go ahead and turn on this power supply, the linear power supply one more time and compare it at 20 K one more time. Now see it's catching a whole bunch more samples. So the spikes are going to be a lot more narrow. Okay. So, so you know what? I'm going to get rid of this red one for a minute here. Let's remove that again. So just look at what we're seeing right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up and I'm going to bring up, I'm going to lower and bring up the signal here just to see what we're going to see is this one kilohertz signal change and we're going to see the harmonics change a little bit, but I'm just curious about the switching noise, these things. I want to see if they change in amplitude or if they just shift from left to right. Okay. Let's take another look here. I'll, I guess I'll save this one. Okay as a reference so we can compare it and we'll make this in green like the linear power supply ones we've been doing so okay there we go let's go ahead and run it okay that was with 700 millivolts let's go ahead and experiment a little bit let's just see sorry if i'm making this video too long Okay, we'll wait until we get all enough samples. So as we change the amplitude, you see we're going to have to wait a little bit for it to really shift. Now the reason it shifted there is probably because my voltage that I'm turning on is slightly different. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and increase this. Those peaks that we're talking about, those noise spikes, as I increase the signal, they actually drop. They shift to the left and they lower in amplitude, right? So if I go down to, say, 500 millivolts, and as I increase, they actually get lower. Well, I'm glad they don't get worse. Uh... Okay, what I'll do, views, let's add the scope view. Okay. So here's our oscilloscope. This is the signal we're putting in. All right. And this is uh, our spectrum, of course. So we've got, we're looking at lots of samples. That's why this looks the way it does. Here, let's. Here, let's try something else. Let's get rid of this one and let's just go to a full screen scope shot. All right, let's go look at the spectrum on this. I'm not sure if I have to be running to capture that or not. Yeah, I guess I have to be running. Okay, I'm going to delete this, start over. Okay, let's go ahead and drop the signal down so we can bring it voltage without having too much signal going through. Okay, let's bring this up. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring our signal up.
I'm gonna go 1.5 again, I think. That looks like a pretty good signal. Okay, let's go look at our spectrum. Okay, and there's our spectrum from 0 to 20K. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze that. All right, guys, so it looks like when we turn up our amplitude, that class D switching actually gets better. This, this is lower, isn't it? I think this is lower. Oh, here's our 20 dB, well, that's one reason why. Uh, we're about 26.6 dB. So um, the spike's about minus 19, so it's about the same, I guess. Um, again, with HP Power Spy. So one more, t one last time. Go save that guy. Change that to green again. Okay, so there's our reference, and that's with the 1.5 volt signal. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is switch back to the switcher one last time and all right there we go okay what i want to do again drop this guy down turn on the input okay there's our power spy running and let's get this back to 1.5 we'll go one point five there we go um i'm gonna let it settle in a little bit looks like it's fairly settled right so let's go ahead and freeze it i'll turn off the power in case you hear that fan go away Okay, these guys shift a little bit. Could be that when I had uh, the HP, I might have gone a little closer to 50 instead of 40, closer to 49 volts. So maybe that accounts for this. I'm not sure. Because um, it does seem like it changes it when I, with the amount of uh, input voltage I provide. But yeah, you can see these things just shift around. They're still kind of there, same kind of amplitude. Um, I'm looking for blue stuff that's different. See this guy right here, he's not a harmonic of the one kilohertz. So that's probably the switching, you know, something from the switching power supply, I guess. But the thing is, is it's really low down here. About 1.7 K. So the harmonics are this guy, the 1 K, 3 K, you know, 4, 5 K. And then in between we have these little spikes here that are new. So I guess this is what the switcher is adding, these little spikes here. So, um, you know, I just don't know if that's anything that you're going to hear or make any difference, right? What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think and i think we're done here all right guys so what do you think what do you think about that uh it looked like they are very close the class d the noise from the switching the class d seems to you know be the biggest part of the noise but most of that stuff is out there at high frequency it is kind of interesting we see that thing happening at just under 10k though right uh kind of wondering where that is I, I want to look at that a little bit more uh, you know next video we'll, maybe I'll be able to point where that out where that comes from okay have an idea so we'll see what we can do in the next video by the way it's been a while since I posted a video and you know about 10 days ago I was skiing and kind of biffed it pretty hard uh, and kind of you know wiped out pretty hard and uh, twist up my leg. It's almost better now. It's amazing. I didn't need any kind of surgery or anything It's been 10 days. I'm getting you know, it's coming back. It's Everything's looking good And I also got a concussion in that and so that's why I took 10 days off to let my brain kind of so it took a couple days off work and just you know relaxed, you know, just rest the noggin, right? And you know, everything's fine. It wasn't any big deal. I didn't have to take any meds or anything like that 
is just, you know, just, you know, playing it safe, taking it easy. Took some time off to make sure I can come back and do this for a while. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I realized that I need to slow down a little bit when I'm skiing. Not, yeah, can't, can't afford to take those kind of falls. So I'm going to slow down skiing. Mountain biking season is coming up, so it's already got me thinking. I got to be a little, you know, I kind of bombed down the hills pretty fast. I think I'm going to have to, you know, pull that in a little bit. So keep doing videos, right? <laughs> so anyway, just want to give you guys reason why, you know, you haven't seen me for about 10 days. So, all right, guys. Um, hey, uh, I think this is kind of fun. I did see a little bit of switching noise. I haven't done really anything to try to clean up anything. We have these two big bulk pastors, but they're, you know, this is for the power supply rails. But I don't think there's any film or ceramics or anything like that to help these bulk pastures for high frequency switching noise. So I think what I'm going to do is put some caps on the back of the board right here and see if I can clean that up. So I'll show you in the next video if I can do that. The inductors and the capacitors out here are for the, for the output. And we just have these two big old capacitors here. I do see some small capacitors around the, the control chip. But as far as the voltage rails, um, I have a feeling that we're seeing some of that ripple coming through at the lower frequencies. So that's why I want to see if I can clean up. These are Nichicon capacitors, good brand. To me, they look like they're real. They could be knockoffs, but I don't know. They look real to me. Maybe I need to take them off and see what they feel like in my hand because, yeah, they could be knockoffs, so it's kind of hard to tell. But uh, other, I mean, it seems like they're using good parts on the board, so feel pretty good. Sorry about the long video. Let me know what you guys think about all this stuff. I wanted to give two thumbs up to the... Here, let me do that. Two thumbs up. A proper two thumbs up for my patrons. <laughs> they deserve it. Uh, really appreciate those guys. You can become a patron. Uh, links down below. Uh, appreciate that. And, uh, yeah. So, support the channel by giving the channel a thumbs up. That helps, too. That's a free way to help support the channel. So, I really appreciate that. And, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Give me your ideas, what you'd like to see. Because I'm going to get this thing in a box and clean it up. But I just want to see, hey, is the switcher going to ruin it? You know, I mean, we got switching for Class D. Some people may not like that. I think a lot of you guys prefer Class A's, Class A-B's. But, I won't, and you know, this is just a project board. They're not going to put a lot of money into these things to you know, to, to sell inexpensively. So there could be a few things, little small things that we can do to actually improve this, right? So let's see if we can do that. And then we'll put in a box, all right? But as far as the switching power supply, again, we can, you know, do some high frequency filtering on the output to try to help improve that a little bit too. And, you know, the stuff that we saw coming in was pretty low and it didn't look like it really increased with the higher signal. It looks like we're getting about 25 volts out RMS um, without you know without the waveform starting going to higher distortion levels so uh, right now distortion is looking really good so we'll take a closer look at all that kind of stuff once we get in the box okay or at least once in the next video when I try to clean up some power spike filtering on this. All right Let's call it quits. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And thanks for sticking around.